good day guys welcome to today's class if this is your first time on this channel please click on the red subscription button below so that when we drop more subscription videos you will be able to get notified and with time iron out difficult topics together so i can still remember very very well in my first video class on marginal and absorption costing by the way if you have not watched my video class i've dropped videos on introduction to marginal and absorption costing activity based costing and all of that so if you have not watched this video i'll drop the link under this ones to watch out for them and i said it in my first video class sorry that marginal costing is majorly for decision making so i've taken my time based on popular demand to explain or to solve one question on how we, how we make decision yes we make pricing decision we make buy and sell to buy or to sell decision we make um accept or reject offer decision and a lot of decision i'll only be taking one question on um decision making but i will tell you guys the ideology or how to go about any question on decision making so i have a question here let's read together and let's solve together adawa limited manufactures a special product called rubber soles for the use for use in its production circuit a rubber sells for 15 nera the current output is 100,000 units per month, which represents 62.5 of installed capacity. Cost per, unit, cost per unit of production are as follows. Direct materials, 5 Naira per unit. Direct labor, 3 Naira. Variable overhead, 0.75 Naira. Fixed factory overhead, 1.50 Naira. Fixed administrative overhead, 1.0 Naira, variable selling expenses 0.25 Naira, total of 11.50. So we're told that Songa Limited, a customer of Adawa Limited, recently placed an order for 40,000 rubber soles at 10 Naira per unit. So we have a question required. Based on the above information, advise Adawa Limited whether to accept or accept the offer or not b what is the maximum price the company should be willing to pay an outside supplier who is interested in manufacturing these products and c what would be the effect of the monthly contribution margin if the sales price was reduced to 14 naira, resulting in a 10 percent increase in sales volume so here is the question and i want us to solve together we want to make decision and to advise adawa limited so, but before we start making decisions, I want to call you guys' attention to something, and that's the fact that this Adawa Limited is not producing at their full capacity. Yes, if, for example, my capacity is to shoot 10 videos per week, but I'm only shooting 3 videos per week. So, I'm not, I'm not maximizing my capacity. I'm underworking myself. So, that is what they're trying to say, and they're trying to tell us that Adawa Limited produced 100,000 units, which is 62.5% of their full capacity. So, 100,000 units, 100,000 units is 62.5% of their capacity. So, what is their full capacity? Let's see. To get their full capacity, just say 100 divided by 62.5 times 100,000. So, 100 divided by 62.5, 100 divided by 62.5 times 100,000 so that will be give us 160,000 so their full capacity is 160,000 units yeah this is their full capacity but if you go back to the question again they said something in the question they said now this is Adawa full capacity but this is what they are producing so they now said Adawa as a customer, which is Songa Limited, a customer of Adawa Limited, place an order for 40,000 rubber soles at 10 Naira per unit. Now, this is what we are producing. But there is a particular customer that is ordering 40,000 units. Now, for this 100,000, if you go back to the question, we are told that the price at which we sell our product is 15 Naira. I want you guys to understand the question so that you will get, you will, when you understand the question, you will know how to go about it. Now, for these 100,000 units that we are producing at 62.5% of our capacity, our price or the our selling price per unit is 15 Naira. But there is a customer 
that's ordering for um 40,000 units at 10 era per unit. So this is the amount we sell. You know, looking at it, we are producing 100,000. We can still produce extra 40,000 because our capacity is 160. If you are producing extra 40,000 with 100,000 that we are producing, that will be 140,000 units. We can still meet it. We can still meet up. But the question is, he said he wants to buy it 10 naira per unit. But meanwhile, we only sell 15 naira per unit. So, what are the things we look at to make decision on whether to accept this offer or not to accept this offer? Let me just quickly summarize it for you. The thing you need to do or what you need to do is what we call marginal costing. Yeah. You need to contribute, you need to calculate the contribution. And how are we going to do about that? What we want to know is that if you are selling to this man 10 naira per unit, are we making contribution at all if you are selling to him 10 naira per unit? So you will take this the price he wants to buy, you will set it against all our variable costs. If this price can cover all our variable costs and, and still have something left, then we are going to offer it. But if this price cannot cover all our variable costs, or it's going to result in negative negativity, then we will not accept it. So because I told you earlier that most important costs in marginal costing is variable cost, and to some extent they are right. Yes, so let's let's solve that and let's see. So welcome back. So the amount um the question says Songa Limited, the customer of Adawa Limited, recently placed an order for 40,000 rubber soles at 10 euro per unit. So we are preparing account for Adawa Limited. Adawa Limited. So who place an order? Songa Limited place an order from Adawa Limited at what price? Ten era. So let's do it this way. Sales. We are going to calculate for the units. We are going to calculate for total. Let's do it this way. So we are going to you know the unit cost, and we are going to know the total costs. We are going to know the unit cost, and at the same time, we are going to know the total cost. So our sales, which is our selling price, is ten era. That he wants to buy is 10 euro per unit, right? So 10 euro per unit is what he wants to buy. But on the contrary, if you look at it, if you are selling it 10 euro per unit, he place another for 40,000 units. So that will be 10 naira times 40,000 will give us our sales in total, and that is 400,000. So the next thing we are going to do is to less all our variable cost of, of production and see if we are going to have any contribution from this so let's go variable cost less less on the variable cost we have direct materials which is five naira per unit so direct materials permit me to put it that way five naira per unit and five naira per unit if you multiply that five naira times forty thousand that um songa limited is ordering we get two hundred thousand so in total our direct material is 200,000. So we have direct labor cost, direct labor, which is 3 naira per unit. So 3 naira per unit, if you multiply 3 naira times 40,000, 3 naira times 40, that should give us 1 around 20,000. So our direct labor is 1 around 20,000. So continue, if you go back to the question again, we have variable overhead. Our variable overhead is 0 0.5, 0 0.75 per unit. So variable overhead, variable overhead. So our variable overhead is 0 0.75 per unit, 0 0.75. So if you multiply 0 0.75, multiply by 40,000 that is ordering, we get 30,000 Naira. So 30,000 Naira. So okay, let's go. We have factory, fixed factory overhead, as you can see, that's a fixed cost, so we don't need to include it. This is decision making. We do reckon with marginal, oh, sorry, variable costing. So we don't reckon with the fixed cost. I think at the back of your mind that whenever you are preparing any question on decision making, please, you don't have to reckon with the fixed cost, just the variable cost. So going that, we have fixed administrative overhead. We don't need that also. We have variable selling expenses. Yes, it's variable, so we need it. So we go 
variable selling expenses variable selling expenses is 0 0.25 per unit so 0 0.25 per unit if you multiply that i think that should give us 10,000 there are times 40,000 that should give us 10,000 there are so if you multiply by that that should give us 10,000 so in units this is the total variable cost of selling and producing to adawa uh, sorry to songa which is ordering from us and this is the total this is our selling price so let's see if our tenor that this guy is ordering our product let's see if we can cover all our variable cost so let's go if you add this 5 plus 3 is 0 0.75 0 0.25 that will give you 9 and if we add all this together 200,000 plus 120 plus 30 plus 10 that should give you 360,000 so let's see 360,000 so let me put the 400,000 here so I can be able to subtract 400,000 so 10 minus 9 I will get a contribution of 1 and 400,000 minus 360,000, I will get a total contribution of 40,000. So this is the contribution, contribution. So if I'm selling to Songa Limited, I'm going to make a contribution of one from each each product. And from the 40,000 product, I'll be making a contribution of 40,000. So the question is, should we accept this offer? The answer is yes, because if you accept this offer, we will had extra 40,000 contribution so the contribution we'll be making from selling our 100,000 that we used to sell at 15 era. So, because, not, you know, don't forget that the question says that they are currently producing 100,000. And their capacity, that, according to what we calculated the other time, their full capacity is 160,000. So, this 100,000, they are going to sell it normal, right? And they are going to get their contribution from it. So, they are not going to produce extra 40,000. So, if they reject this offer... They are not going to have a contribution of 40,000. They are just going to have the contribution they are going to get from this 100,000. So it's like an extra additional contribution to them. So they should actually accept this offer. Adawa Limited should accept this offer because it's going to pay them. So the question, several questions state that what is the maximum price the company should be willing to pay an outside supplier who is interested in manufacturing these products? Now, to calculate the maximum price the company or Adawa Limited should be willing to pay anybody who wants to supply us. What the question is asking there is that if at all we have someone who wants to supply Adawa, Adawa is the one producing. So how much should Adawa, by how much should Adawa say, this is my maximum price I can buy from you? That's what they are trying to say. So the question says that what is the maximum price the company should be willing to pay an outside supplier? Who is interested in manufacturing the product? So, if we want to calculate that, we need to add all our variable costs. And all addition of all our variable costs will give us that because this is our cost of production. So, if you are selling at a particular amount higher than our cost of production, we cannot buy. Let me give you guys a good example. If I'm producing um, this marker that I'm using for this class for 100 naira and I want to um buy from someone and the person said he wants to sell it for me 150 naira i should not accept it because what is selling for me is higher than my cost if i'm producing myself i will save a 15 naira cost so but if the person is willing to produce or to sell to me at 100 naira i should accept it why because i will save myself of the stress of production so that is what we need to do add all our variable costs and see we can and, and get the price that the maximum price that we should accept anybody who wants to supply this good for us so let's go. Let's add our variable costs. So our, our variable costs, we have direct material. Let me put this this way. So we have direct material. Direct material, which is 5. Now direct label. Direct label, which is 3. Variable overhead. Overhead, which is what? 0 0.75. Now, I'm not going to put variable selling expenses i'm not going to put variable selling expenses and you know why i will tell you guys why i'm not going to put it now five plus three is eight eight plus zero point uh, zero point seven five that's eight point seven five now the reason i cannot add my variable selling expenses because variable selling expenses whether i produce or i buy 
it's an expenses i'm still going to incur now because variable selling expenses are the expenses i incur while selling for example variable selling expenses can be cost of transporting goods to my customers is a very good selling expenses if i'm going to sell my goods to my customers i need car or motor to take them from wherever i'm selling them to my customers so even if i'm producing it or i'm ordering ordering it from another person i still need the car to transport it so that is why variable selling expenses cannot be added to the cost because even if i'm still buying it even if the company is still buying it they are still going to incur variable selling expenses so that is why you won't add it so if you have something like that this all these are the cost of production direct material cost of production variable cost of production direct labor variable cost of production variable override over of course variable cost of production but this one is variable selling expenses that is why you don't include it